Welcome to Studies of Pikminology, where I go over and discuss the wildlife of PNF-404 in the Pikmin series. Before I start, I would like to say that most of my research was conducted via in-game experiences and through reading articles on Pikipedia, an unofficial encyclopedia for all things Pikmin. There's a lot of cool information and trivia on the website, so I'll leave a link in the description for you to check out. I highly encourage it. Today, we will be discussing the faces of the series, the Pikmin themselves. Pikmin are plant-like lifeforms first encountered by Captain Olimar when he crashed onto PNF-404. He discovers the first onion buried in the ground. When it unearths itself, it spits out a single red sprout. When Olimar plucks it from the ground, a red Pikmin pops out. Pikmin are small, have many different varieties, and are prone to being targeted and marked for death by almost everything that sees them. GET THE FUCK OFF MY PROPERTY! They are about 3 centimeters in height, including the stem and flower, and have humanoid bodies. They could run, carry objects, fight, and dig like humans. All Pikmin have different shapes, sizes, colors, and abilities, but what they all have in common is the stem with either a leaf, bud, or flower on top of their heads, and being absolutely oh, adorable. Yes. The leaf, bud, or flower on top of the stem shows the Pikmin's maturity. Pikmin are loyal creatures, and will follow and obey whoever plucks them from the ground. In one of Olimar's notes in Pikmin, he writes down his concerns and questioning as to why the Pikmin haven't attacked him. He wonders if they view him as a parental figure of sorts, but it may be more likely that what makes Pikmin non-hostile is his whistle, as shown with the antenna beetle's sound being able to control Pikmin. However, the Pikmin do not attack Olimar or any other captains while idle, so maybe they do see him as a parental figure. Maybe they know that they will struggle to get by without him and the other leaders. Da, 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 da. Come sing with me! Da, da. Nom, nom, nom. All Pikmin have the same general humanoid appearance, with two arms, legs, hands, feet, with three little fingers and toes, stems, and round eyes. Their limbs are used as roots while they're buried in the ground. This resembles a legend about the mandrake plant, whose roots sometimes resemble a human body. You can kind of see the resemblance between a mandrake and a Pikmin. The legend says that if you pluck a mandrake plant, it may either serve you or kill you with a high-pitched screech. Thank goodness Pikmin don't scream at us when we pluck them out of the ground. But can you imagine if they did? <laughs> Pikmin's internal structure is mostly unknown, but we do know that they have little skeletons as shown when they get shocked in Pikmin 2. Seeing as how they only consume nectar, their digestive tract, if they even have one, may be small and relatively simple, if all they really need, or if all they really consume, is nectar. That being said, Pikmin get most of their nutrients from the onions when they break down food brought to them by the Pikmin. Speaking of onions, seeing as how they are a source of Pikmin reproduction, combined with Pikmin's lack of visible reproductive parts, it's safe to say that Pikmin do not sexually reproduce. I wouldn't want to stumble upon two Pikmin doing the thing anyway. <laughs> However, Pikmin are capable of asexual reproduction. In the first game, if a flower Pikmin has killed a battle, they may drop a seed that will grow and sprout the next day. This means that Pikmin don't have defined sexes and can be considered hermaphrodites. Pikmin don't have lungs, and judging from seeing what happens to a Pikmin's stem when it catches fire, is poisoned, etc., it seems that their main source of life or respiration is the leaf bud or flower on the top of their head. Blue Pikmin are described as having gills on their cheeks, however. Despite these gills never being visible in-game or on official artwork, they seem to be linked to the top of their stems that allow them to survive and swim in the water. Pikmin can survive in shallow bodies of water as long as it doesn't t shut up. Pikmin can survive in shallow bodies of water as long as it does touch the top of their stems. The only Pikmin that are actually able to swim, regardless, are blue Pikmin, so other types will fall beneath the water's surface and drown without help. When a Pikmin dies, a little ghost flies away from where it fell. They may be dead, but they'll protect us in spirit, mostly. Sometimes Pikmin will release liquid of their matching color when impaled by enemies like the cloaking Burronet. This is likely their equivalent of blood. Pikmin pop out from the onion as seeds, and after a few seconds of being in the ground, they become sprouts that must be plucked out by a captain. How Pikmin go from a seed to a full-blown living being with multiple capabilities in a matter of seconds is unknown to me, but my guess is that they drink a lot of milk. When left idle, Pikmin stems will glow with their respective color, and in Pikmin, 
they would lose a bit of tint in their color. At the end of the second game, it shows that Pikmin are also bioluminescent and can glow. How they're able to do this is unknown. Pikmin are strong creatures, able to carry things at least 10 times their size, as observed by blue Pikmin throwing purple Pikmin out of the water to save them from drowning. Strong little fellows. Pikmin can also speak, and can even be heard saying some human words when being plucked out of the ground. When idle, Pikmin will interact with each other in various ways, including playing, grooming, and observing the leaders. Idle Pikmin have been seen mimicking various leaders' actions, like a young child with their older sibling. In Pikmin 2, if you have a group of 100 Pikmin consisting of 20 of each type, they may sing parts of the song Aino Uta at random. The same thing can be accomplished in Pikmin 3, only they sing part of that game's main theme instead. Based on this and the other sounds the Pikmin make, it seems that their language is rather simple, but not enough for us to fully understand. Judging from their interactions with each other and how they watch the leaders when Pikmin are stationary, shows that they have a very friendly social structure. Each Pikmin has three stages of maturity, represented by what's on top of their stems. A leaf is the beginner stage, a bud is the middle stage, and a flower is the final stage. With each stage of maturity, the Pikmin's speed and abilities to do tasks increase. In Pikmin and Pikmin 2, if a Pikmin is knocked over by an attack, there's a chance that their maturity will decrease. This never happens in Pikmin 3, however. Imagine if we got punched in the face and we aged backward a few years. Fuck. The most common way to make a Pikmin progress their maturity is to have one drink nectar, which will instantly take it from the leaf or bud stage to the flower stage. Another way to allow them to mature is to leave unplugged Pikmin in the ground for a while. They will automatically progress from leaf to bud to flower over a set period of time. This is especially useful if you're doing lots of multitasking, especially in the first game. There are nine, ten if you count the bad ending in the first game, types of Pikmin. Red Pikmin are the first types you encounter in every game. They deal the most damage per second out of all types and are resistant to fire. It's always good to have a group of red Pikmin with you in case you need to beat some ass while your other Pikmin are doing a task. Plus, those pointy noses probably point to treasure or something. Yellow Pikmin are resistant to electricity and, thanks to their big ears and lighter bodies, can be thrown higher than other Pikmin types. They're also the quickest diggers. Leave 10 to 20 yellows at a digging site and they'll unearth whatever treasure or fruit you may be trying to get it to in no time. Blue Pikmin are immune to water-based attacks and can move around in the water. In Pikmin 3, they're able to actually swim and will decimate any underwater enemies in a matter of seconds. In the first two games, they are also able to save drowning Pikmin if they're standing idle near a drowning Pikmin, and this includes purple Pikmin. Purple Pikmin are big, buff, and incredibly slow. They're able to carry many objects on their own with a strength of 10 Pikmin. In Pikmin 2, when they're thrown above an enemy, they'll temporarily stun the target and deal massive damage upon landing. The stun mechanic was removed in Pikmin 3. Purple Pikmin are good to have alongside Red Pikmin, but their slow movement speed may result in struggles to keep up with the rest of the group, even at the flower stage. Speaking of flowers, their buds and flowers are magenta instead of white, and being subterranean, they don't have onions like the other Pikmin. White Pikmin are small, thin, and incredibly fast. They move faster than any Pikmin type, and those big red eyes allow them to detect buried treasure and fruit. White Pikmin are great at transporting treasure, fruit, and bodies to wherever you need them to go in a flash. They're also resistant to poison, and extremely poisonous themselves. Upon being eaten, the poison will severely damage the enemy. If a burrowing Snagra ate just a few of them, it would be enough to smite almost half of its health. Like Purple Pikmin, their buds and flowers are magenta, and they lack an onion. Rock Pikmin are rocks. Shocking, huh? Their big bodies prevent them from latching onto enemies, so to attack, they'll just hurl themselves at the target. When thrown, they deal the most damage on impact, more than the purple pigment's dive slam. However, their battle performance when not thrown is nothing to write home about. Rock Pikmin can smash through glass and are also invulnerable to being crushed and stabbed, but are still vulnerable to explosions and make a good snack. The indigenous creatures here truly eat anything, even rocks. Rock Pikmin buds and flowers are indigo. Winged Pikmin have wings, of course, 
and are smaller than white Pikmin. Similar to white Pikmin, winged Pikmin have big blue eyes, but they don't seem to allow them to see anything buried in the ground. Their little wings allow them to carry objects across spaces that can't be accessed by other Pikmin, making for some cool shortcuts to the onion in your ship. Winged Pikmin perform very poorly in battle, but they're fantastic at battling airborne enemies and members of the Arachnorb family. Like Rock Pikmin, their buns and flowers are indigo. Bulbmen are another subterranean species found in some caves in Pikmin 2. They are bulborbs that have been infected by a parasitic Pikmin, of which we do not know the design of or what it even does to cause such a phenomenon. Up to 10 juveniles will follow one mature Bulbmen, which behaves like a spotty bull bear by patrolling a sublevel in search of food and will attack the captains and your Pikmin if they spot them. When the mature Bulbmen is defeated, the little ones will start freaking out and running around randomly, but whistling at them will calm them down and bring them to your side. Bulbmen can mature to buds and flowers like normal Pikmin and are immune to all elemental hazards, as per Bulborb Anatomy. When analyzing Bulbmen in the Piclopedia, Olimar's notes say this, this loathsome creature is in fact a parasitic form of Pikmin that has infected a Bulborb. Unlike Pikmin that nest in Pikmin onions, this parasitic relative spends its life inside the body of a host, usually a Bulborb. Juveniles fall in line and mimic the actions of their parent until maturing to full independence. By burying its root-like limbs into the nervous system of the host Bulborb and infusing it with natural hormonal excretions, the Bulbman is able to control virtually all of the host's bodily functions. However, the host's voracious appetite seems impossible to suppress. Olimar also implies that a host may not be restricted to just bulborbs, so imagine controlling a sand-belted beer slug with a little stem on top of its head. Mushroom Pikmin, also known as Puffmen, aren't actually a separate species, but are the result of a Pikmin being exposed to the Puffstool spore attack. When exposed, they will turn purple and will grow a mushroom on top of their stems. This can be undone by attacking a Pikmin with an unaffected Pikmin, shaking them off of Olimar, waiting for the effect to wear off, or defeating the Puffstool. Puffmin and the Puffstool can only be found in the first game. In the bad ending of the first game, the Pikmin take a dead Olimar to one of the Onions, where he pops out in the form of a Pikmin. He grows back to his normal size like other Pikmin, and has a black stem on his head. What this interesting Pikmin is capable of is unknown, but I don't think we should take our eyes off of Olimin. In the best ending of the first game, when Olimar flies away from PNF 404, multiple different colored onions will also fly away from the planet's surface. These colors include pink, black, cyan, orange, purple, and green. Purple Pikmin appear in the sequel, but they do not have an onion. Winged Pikmin and Rock Pikmin have onions of their own, but the Rock Pikmin's onion is more gray than black. So far, green, cyan, and orange onions have yet to appear, but Bulbman stems appear to be orange when they are rarely buried in the ground, in cases of an attack from a swooping snitchbug or a mamuta. When all of one type of Pikmin die, a single sprout will pop out of the fallen species' onion the next day so you can repopulate. A total extinction is when all Pikmin die. In the first two games, this is handled by what I've just described, but in Pikmin 3, a new sprout will pop out as soon as the last member of a Pikmin species dies. The connections between the Pikmin and their onions are fascinating, and how they're able to produce more Pikmin after an extinction is incredible. No matter what happens, it seems that Pikmin will never go extinct as long as their onions stand firm. It would be a criminal offense to make a video about the Pikmin and not discuss candy pop buds, plants with petals that resemble Pikmin skin in terms of texture and appearance. If a Pikmin falls into one of these plants, it will spit out a seed of its respective color, in Pikmin, you can throw up to 10 Pikmin into one candy pop bud before it shuts its snout its, its snout? <laughs> before it closes and spits out 10 seeds, but this number was lowered to 5 at a time in Pikmin 2 and 3. In Pikmin 2, there exists a candy pop bud called the Queen Candy Pop Bud, which cycles through the colors red, yellow, and blue. This will spit out a max of 10 Pikmin of its chosen color after absorbing one single Pikmin. Some candy pop buds will wither away after being used a certain amount of times. Candy pop buds only appear in caves in Pikmin 2, but in the first and third games they appear above ground. The relationship between the Pikmin and these mysterious plants is unknown, but interestingly enough, in Pikmin 3 they both share the same leaf texture. Throughout the series, candy pop buds have also emitted particles similar to the onions and made sounds similar to the Pikmin. Unlike most other Pikmin types, winged and white Pikmin are non-monochromatic, meaning they have more than one color on their bodies. Winged Pikmin have a dark stripe on their bodies that make them resemble bees, and white Pikmin have slight tints of purple on their fingertips. 
In Pikmin, all three types were originally intended to hold bomb rocks. Because Yellow Pikmin only had one significant ability that wasn't even that useful outside of a few situations, the ability to handle the explosives was restricted to them. With bomb rocks being too big to carry in Pikmin 2, Yellow Pikmin were given resistance to electricity, and in Pikmin 3, all types are able to carry bomb rocks again. The first five members of the Pikmin family, not counting Puffman or Bulbman, appear and transport your game data in the Wii to Wii U transfer software. That means there are Pikmin hiding in your Wii or Wii U system. The main five Pikmin in Pikmin 2 resemble the five senses. Red Pikmin have long noses, Yellow Pikmin have big ears, Blue Pikmin have mouths, Purple Pikmin have little hairs on their heads, and White Pikmin have big eyes. Additionally, the main five Pikmin in Pikmin 3 represent the elements of nature. Red is fire, Blue is water, Winged is air, Rock is earth, and Yellow is aether. Hey, that's me. In the purple and white Pikmin introduction cutscenes, they are shown to have their own unique voices. <laughs> but in normal gameplay, they sound like all the other Pikmin. Purple Pikmin have different voices as seen in Pikmin short movies as well. In Pikmin 3, Rock and Pink Pikmin have their own voices in both the intro cutscenes and normal gameplay. Rock and Winged Pikmin had blue flowers in their concept art, as opposed to their now indigo flowers. Pikmin appear in multiple other games as cameos. You just gotta keep a real close eye out because they are very small and hard to miss. For some reason, in Pikmin 2, it's impossible for 100 Pikmin to be stuck in the ground in a sublevel at the same time. The last remaining Pikmin will either be pushed back by Mamutas or stay idle when a snooping snitchbug tries to grab it. The Pikmin types that are best in combat are always the first to be acquired. You find reds in all four games, and purples and rocks are the second to be found in two and three respectively. The Pikmin are all voiced by Hajime Wakai, and the voice lines are manipulated to sound like they currently do. A YouTuber called Scruffy made a video with a section that covers this in more detail, so I recommend you check that out. Link in the description below. In Hey Pikmin, the SS Dolphin Mark II implies that Pikmin appear on multiple planets. It's safe to say this about the other creatures we can see as well. This is a topic that I'd like to dive into at some point in a future video, so stay tuned for that. That will wrap up the first episode. Thank you for watching. I'm not sure which uh, family in this game I will make a video on next, but this series is incredibly fun for me, and I hope that you viewers enjoy it too. Again, thank you for watching, I'll see you in the next video.